Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome you here this morning to the Montana Baptist Church in beautiful downtown Montana, Pennsylvania. We are the coolest church in the center of town. Amen. <laughs> Since we have air conditioning. The Methodist next door, they call it. We're not bragging. We're not bragging, but we're, you know, we're just saying it. Oh, look. So Ooh. with that in mind, uh, I'm excited. There's things that are happening uh, that are up and coming with uh, uh, events in the, like September and also in, in November and Thanksgiving. We had a leadership meeting earlier, early last week. Oh, they came up with some real good ideas. You know, God's on the move here in Montana. That's an example. Uh, mm -hmm. Give him praise and glory for all of that. But until those things unfold, and they're coming, and we want to, want to encourage you to be a part of it in some form or fashion, to be able to help out and to be able to uh, amplify what God is doing. And uh, but until that time, coming up in two weeks, September the 5th, we're almost, we're almost through the month of August. Wow. You know, time keeps sliding along. I had a teacher one time that was in study hall. We'd sit there and we'd look at the clock. And he said, time will pass. Will you? So as we were supposed to be studying instead of playing poker. But anyway, uh -huh. <laughs> coming up September the 5th, the Gideons will be here. And uh, I encourage uh, each and every one of you to come and be a part of that service and help promote and support that which the Gideons do. And it's uh, such a much needed much needed to outreach into the communities that, where they serve. And their, and their testimonies and things that they do, you know, are really encouraging when we see the, get to hear their stories of how God is using the Gideons to be able to uh, proclaim Christ as Savior. And those Gideons, you know, they're not just for one organization. Uh, that same spirit of being a, a member of God's army applies to all of us. So, with that in mind, coming up on September the 24th and the 25th is Rally Day weekend. We've got some things that are happening on the 24th. On Saturday, the Kingdom Kids will be here uh, with their program. Uh, there will also be a craft uh, for the kids to do. And then later on, we're going to follow up with ice cream. So, everybody likes ice cream, and I encourage you to come out and promote this activity. Promote outreach into the community. The mission fields that are beyond these four walls are in desperate need of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter if they're two days old or 200 years old. They need the gospel. And we need to be a part of that, sharing that. So, and then also then on Sunday, uh, we'll have a uh, a special a, uh, musician come in do a couple of songs and then there will also be a message for that Sunday that will be the 25th and also we're continuing with the, uh, the water a gathering up of that uh, we're going to start distributing some of that to the local fire departments and volunteer situations volunteer locations but that doesn't mean we're going to quit collecting water bring it in and we'll make sure that uh, they, it is distributed. Now is the time that they need it because of the hot, uh, the hot weather. So bring that in. And also we'll continue with the wise cards that are available. Uh, and also uh, Operation Christmas Child continues. Any other announcements? See, yes, Susan. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that on September 14th, we're having the nominating committee. We're going to be meeting at 6.30 here at the church. And then I also just wanted to mention that on September 16th, we're going to be having our Dorcas meeting, our first one of the season, that we're going to be meeting at Perkins at 5.30. Okay. All right. And that's for all of our ladies. All right. 
nominating committee and also the Dorcas committee. The Dorcas committee. So on the 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 fifteenth was it for nominating? Fourteen. Fourteen for nominating. If you get a call later that evening, there's only one answer, and it's yes. <laughs> Any others? If not, uh, let us uh, turn our attention and worship God and give Him the glory. We have assembled here this morning to praise Him, to give Him honor. Stand as we have our responsive reading. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness in this world against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take on to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, stand therefore, therefore, having your loins girded about with the truth, and, and having, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the pre preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, all the king is shield of faith, wherewith ye shall come to quench all the fiery darts. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And all the saints were to proclaim the, the Word of God because people need the Lord. Number 680 is our first hymn.
Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Lord, we need you. People, each and every one of us here, those that are listening by the sound of our voice, people need the Lord. And Lord, we thank you that your presence was real in the hearts of individuals that shared that gospel message, that salvation message that brought us, broke us, and brought us kneeling before you, before a humble, uh, sovereign God. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you, that you put us back together. You mend the broken dreams and the broken promises and, Lord, the headaches, the heartaches, and all that come with trying to do things ourselves, trying to save ourselves. Lord, we realize that it's only you and we as people as individuals whom you love and die for, we need you. And when we come to that knowledge that there is no other way, and we accept you as Lord and Savior of our life, we have no other recourse but to serve you in whatever form or fashion or location you place us. To be strong in the Lord. To fight the wiles of the devil, to stand. Lord, if there is ever a time where we need to stand and proclaim your truth is now. Be with us now, dear Lord, as we stand and proclaim the word of the Lord to a world that's lost and dying. May we be instruments, ambassadors of your, of your word and of your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know. I think today's song I won't use my guitar because I use my hands, okay? You better be deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. Wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. All right, thanks. Is it just me as old, or is it always easy? wide and deep than deep and wide. <laughs> they all, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I find, because, of course, I'm not coordinated. I have to watch somebody when they're clapping their hands so I can stay with them. <laughs> so, all right. Would our scripture reader come this morning as we proclaim God's word in his house for his glory? I guess I have it on her.
that what he has done has been done through God. Mm -hmm. And then our second verse is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 to 26. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they will produce quarrels. And the Lord, the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not be resentful. Those who oppose him must be gently instructed in hopes that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of truth. And that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of this devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Ooh. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to these readings. All right, you may be seated. Well, I guess you can be seated, but if you wish to sing our next song and you want to stand up for Jesus, that would be you <laughs> It's number 596, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. <laughs> Results and reactions. 
Uh, we'll be lucky maybe if we get through the, the reasons and the, re and the uh, <laughs> results and what will take place. Maybe we'll get into the reactions because I'll tell you what. There is just such a need for us to become emboldened with the word of Almighty God. The sword of the Lord is what? The word of God. Oh, there we'll get the microphone. So, if there was ever a time where we needed to be able to stand firm, stand secure, stand unwavering, it's now. You know, and it's, Jesus said, think it not strange, they hated me. They will also hate you because of me. And then we see that in Paul writes to the church of Philippi, he says, brother, join me in my example and note those who walk, so walk, as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Philippi, you need to be walking the walk, talking the talk, there is no middle ground. We've talked about that early on. He says, I say this now, even weeping. He was crying out. He was crying for us. His heart was broken for those who were enemies of the cross, who had maybe turned and walked away, who were maybe steeped in some sort of false doctrine, false gospel. He's crying for them, knowing that they'll die a loss, whose God is their belly. In other words, themselves. The passage of Scripture that we start out this morning follows a, a passage of Scripture that is known by all of us. It is repeated, and that is, you know, John 3.16. Is there anyone here that does not know that, that verse? Because I'm glad you got that down in your heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in me shall have everlasting life. Life. Everlasting life. But we pick it up here in verse 17. This is the reason that Jesus Christ came to the world. This is the reason that God sent his Son to earth, to man. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn it. He didn't come to judge. He didn't come to lay guilt, blame, and condemnation on the... His mission was to save. But the world through him might be saved. That is the reason that Jesus Christ came to this earth. To save it. To save it, not to condemn it. Jesus said there in verse, excuse me, in chapter 12. He said, I come into the world, I come as a light into the world. He didn't come to judge. But there's a coming a time when individuals who reject Jesus Christ, he will be their judge at that last day. Chapter 12, verse 48 says this, He who rejects me and receives not my word has, has one who judged him. The word I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Jesus came the first time to save. But he'll stand, you'll stand before Jesus as his, the judge. If you don't know him, if you reject his word, he came to save Folks, if you're living outside the will of God, there's two choices. You're either going to accept Jesus as your Savior or you're going to stand before him as your judge, from which there is no appeal. No slick lawyer is going to get you off. 
That is the reason Jesus came to this world to save it. Not so much the physical terra firma, but the people of the world. He came to save. He offered himself. That's what makes Christianity different than any other belief. Christianity is not a religion. And we'll talk on some of that just a few moments from now. Christianity is a relationship. In the cool of the evening, God walked with his most precious creation, Adam and Eve, Adam and the woman, and talked with them. He desires fellowship with his created beings. He desires fellowship with you and I. Talk to him. But then sin separated that fellowship, that one-on-one -on -one fellowship. But through Jesus Christ, we can have that one-on-one -on -one fellowship with our Creator. Jesus came into the world in a in all actuality, Christianity is relationship. It's not a religion. <laughs> How many of you may have told or been told this or, or uh, you know, oh, so-and-so, they're religious. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I heard one fellow tell us he was saying something about an individual who was, and get this, this is what the man said. This is an actual quote. He's as religious as all hell. Oh my. Yeah. Of course, you know that individual yeah. had some issues going on. Hopefully he's found the Lord. But here we see Christianity is a relationship. It's not a religion. What makes it so different than all the other religions of the world is God reaching down to man. God, who loves us, sent his son, reaching down to fallen humanity. For all the other religions of the world is man trying to reach God on his terms. So A, question number one, or, or point number one, the reason that Jesus came to this world was earth to save it. We'll move on over to the results. God gives us two choices. And he laid it out there. In verse 18, he said, He who believes on, on him is not condemned. But he who believes not is condemned. God gives it. It's either one or the other. Two choices. And we've been talking about the different choices since back in June. There's two ways. You're either going to do it God's way or you're going to do it man's way. You know, it's amazing. You know, that all these other religions throughout the world, and even atheists, atheism is a religion. They try to reach God on their own terms, even though they don't believe. The atheists don't believe. You know, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. It takes more faith to believe in atheism and devolution than it does to be a believer in Jesus Christ and creation. It takes more faith. It takes more faith to believe that you and I crawl out of a slime pit somewhere. I'd much rather believe that God created each and every one of us and we're made in his image. Amen. Amen. But yet we see the two choices, the results of God coming to earth in Jesus Christ. We have two choices, two foundations to build upon. We're either going to build on the foundations of God or we're going to build on the foundations of man, which will be. Religions of the world, they build their foundations on man. I build my foundation on the rock. On the rock of Jesus Christ. The stone made without hands. It's going to crush 
all the false gods and all, all the false religions of the world. The results of not believing, you have two choices. Believe or believe not. You know, the, it's no wonder, it's no wonder that when we share the gospel with folks or try to share the gospel with some folks, they, they begin to say, well, they hate us or they dislike us. You know, they well, well how, how do you know that to be the truth? You know, that's not what I believe. This is what I believe. Uh, you know, what you believe it is or what you don't believe is totally objectionable to the Word of God. Then they, they get angry at you. You know, if someone, you're talking to someone who, you know, who doesn't know the Lord, but yet they're enjoying their life, so they think, in what they're involved in. When you share the gospel, the true light of Jesus Christ with them, they, they get rebellious against you. And by the way, that's where persecution comes from. They hate you so much that they're willing to, to take your life because you know you injected something into their foundation. You may have shaken their foundation. You may have poked holes in it. And hopefully if you poke holes in their foundation, it leads into light. The light of Jesus Christ. But they don't like us. Because we proclaim the truth. And regardless of what religion it is. If we stand on the unadulterated word of Almighty God and His word called the Holy Scriptures, we're going to face persecution. We're going to face objection. We're going to face hatred mm -hmm. from folks around us. Which gives us an indicator that God's about due to wrap this thing up. The next event on God's, God's time clock is the rapture of the church. You and I will be called before all proverbial hell breaks loose. And the book of Revelation comes to life. He who believes not. Or who believes. Jesus came into this world. And said I am the light of the world. We're going to face some of these oppositions if we're going to proclaim the truth of Almighty God. You know, it never ceases to amaze me, these false religions, these false doctrines. You know, we're made in God's image. But yet, they try to make God in their, the image of man. They, they, make, they try to make God something that they can describe. Something that they can, you know, have likeness to. Or better yet, a God that they can control. Huh. God can't be controlled by man. Mm -hmm. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross, I was made, my life was made whole. We don't get any better than that, folks. But here we see individuals. Jesus came and said, yeah, this is the condemnation that light came into the world. I am the light of the world, Jesus said. I am the light of the world. Men love darkness. They love darkness rather than, than, than light because their deeds were made known, were revealed. You know, that's why thieves and stuff, they do this stuff at night. The real bold ones do it in the daylight. But you know, you want that cover of darkness to cover up your evil deeds. Jesus has said, I brought light into the world. He revealed to you and I our sinful past, our sinful behavior, what the life that we were involved in was darkness, was evil. He revealed it to us through His power of the Holy Spirit, which was pounding on our hearts for whatever the day that you accepted Christ as your Savior. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, now resides inside. He's no longer on the outside. For men love the darkness. And when 
Isaiah said, you know, that Jesus is Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Isaiah said that, you know, a light amongst the Gentile, that's you and I. Jesus was not only a light onto the Jewish community, but he was a light onto the Gentiles, you and I, for the entire world. That's the reason he came. And men love darkness because it hides their evil deeds. Oh. People you feel threatened by the light. Have you ever stood in front of a mirror? You know, say there's a mirror that's got this big light above it. You know, you stand back here pretty far and you can say, well, I don't look too bad. <laughs> you know, the closer you get to that light and that mirror, guess what? The more it reflects the imperfections that are going on. It shows the wrinkles, the, the crow's feet, and all the other scars and or hair, lack of hair, or hair which had left, in my case, the closer you get to the light, the more it reveals your outward imperfections. But the closer you get to the light of Jesus Christ, it reveals the what's concealed in the heart of mankind. You can't see what's in a person's heart, but Jesus can. And that light that he offers reveals that. No longer do we have to hide in the darkness, a cover, cover of darkness. Individuals, they love that darkness. They don't want light shown on their life because it would reveal to them the truth, that which they are involved in is objectionable to the word of God. Neither they cometh to the light. Everyone who, who does who does evil hates the light. They hate the light. They don't want to be revealed. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds be reproved, other it be made known. But he who does truth comes to the light. You see, light and truth go together. You can't have one without the other. The light of the world is Jesus. The truth of the world is Jesus. <laughs> People can deny the truth, but on resurrection morning, that tomb in Jerusalem, or just outside Jerusalem, the truth walked out. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. On resurrection morning, the truth walked out. There's no denying it. You Sanhedrins, you, you, you legalistic, you individuals who reject Christ, the truth is standing before you. He was here for 40 days, shown by revealing himself to over 500 people. In a court of law, even in the court of the Jewish community, you had to have two or more witnesses to make it true. That's why there was two angels at the day of ascension. Why you men of Galilee stand here looking up into the heavens? This same Jesus will return to you in like manner. Praise God, he's going to do it. We had the two witnesses there. And then in, in, in Acts, we see where they said there was 500 or more that Jesus revealed himself to while he taught. 500 witnesses is kind of hard to deny. Mm -hmm. Truth and life, light go together. Several years ago, I flipped the, it was pouring down rain. It was one of them, you know, ones like we had just the other day where it was just a real frog striker, mm -hmm. you know. It, I flipped on the outside light and made one of them big spotlights and showing all over the driveway. Because I was looking to see how, the, how much rain was coming down. Well, needless to say, as soon as I flipped that light on, there was this moth coming up off the ground. It would fly a little bit. It would get beaten down by the rain. It would fly a little bit. 
It would get beaten down by the rain. But in its instinct, it had to get to that light. It had to get to that warmth, that glow. You know, that's the way we Christians ought to be. We might get beaten down. We not, might get watered down. Somebody squirt water on us and try to trot us down. But as long as we keep going towards the light and the love of Jesus Christ, we will make it. That should be our instinct. The Apostle Paul says, I have not yet finished my course. I strive to that, that crown that waits for me in glory. That should be the way we should be looking at things. Yeah, we might be beaten down by age, sickness, whatever malady that comes our way, strife in the family, you know, upheaval in, in our communities. And keep striving. Keep reaching for that goal. Don't let it beat you down. Because you know the truth. The truth of the love of Jesus Christ and he is the light of the world. Light and truth, they go together. You know, there's other religions that think they found truth. You know, the, the Buddhists, they think truth is a mystery. The Hindus, they search for truth, but they never find it. Muhammad pointed to the truth. And there's a whole lot of folks out there that are still looking for the truth. And it never ceases to amaze me why folks don't want to hear the truth. All the stuff that's going on in the world, if folks would just tell the truth, how much nicer it would be. But see, when they stand before Almighty God and Jesus as their judge, there'll be no hiding anything. The truth will be revealed in their lives. Jesus himself said, I am the way, not a way. I am the truth, not a truth. And the life. Actually, did it say and the life? No, it said the life. The life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's pretty exclusionary. We did we talk about that just a few minutes ago. Someone read a passage of scripture that said that. Oh joy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jesus said, I am. He is the great I am. He said to Moses in the backside of the desert after 40 years heard, she, heard his father-in-law of sheep. He said at age 80, so age is not a requirement for retirement. Retirement begins when you expire or you lift it out of here. At age 80, God told Moses, I have a job for you, boy. No, I'm paraphrasing that. <laughs> I want you to go. I want you to go to that people that you ran away from 40 years ago and go back and tell them and leave them out. Take them out of Egypt. Take them out of bondage. But I, 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 you know, Moses has a problem he couldn't speak too well. That's the reason he wanted Aaron to be his mouthpiece. Well, who, who should I send send them? Who, who should I send send them? You tell them folks that I am sent me. I am sent you. The great I am. I am the light. I am the shepherd. I am all of those things. There is no other I am. And the individuals that we encounter, because they're so enamored into false truths, false doctrine, false teaching, false preaching, false belief in something, and a false belief in man is going to be their savior, or better yet, government's going to be their savior. You share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. You might not be taken too well. But Jesus again said, they hated me, they're going to hate you. Count it a blessing and rejoice when men revile you for my name's sake. <laughs> 
when that happens, we know we must be doing something good. As the Lord is giving glory. You're sharing your life. Sharing that light. I come into the world that whosoever believes on me should not abide in the darkness. And if any hear my words and believe not, I'm going to judge them. That was his present mission back when Jesus walked the earth. Our mission today is to share that love and that light, that salvation message with whoever we come in contact with. I went to a, a memorial service on Friday for a young, uh, 21 years old, young man we had in Scout Troop. This, this, this service was an hour and three quarters long. It was a worship service. They gave two altar calls and one cried, plea for commitment, a recommitment. Well, while you have them there, let's preach to them. Because you don't know who's there. You know, the people that we come in contact with, oh, by the way, brother, I did use your, your, your two choices. Both are free. I used that this past week. Yeah, and I love Brother Jim's example. Very pointed and very effective. You know, if we believe in Jesus Christ, we spend all this time, energy, resources, promoting a church, and if it's all for nothing, you know, we didn't gain anything. And the individuals that you come in contact with and say, well, why do you do all that stuff? You know, when they shut them in, that's it, you're done. But what if we're right? What if we're right? There's something more. I have it on God's word that there's something more than what's right here right now. There's a lot of chaos in the world. God moved mightily amongst the folks there. Everywhere. May your love and your light be brought into that darkness. Because men, you know, men being a general term, men and women, they love the darkness. They don't want to hear the truth. If the truth comes out, they deny it or blame it on somebody else. Mm -hmm. It wasn't me. Now, this is not new. It wasn't me. It was that woman you gave me. <laughs> that could clear back to Genesis chapter 3. So the blame game as it isn't new. Scripture says here then, but he who does truth and comes to the light, I saw the light. I saw the light. We sing that song. <laughs> Send the light. Send the gospel light. I saw the light. I was so wondrous, low to how it goes, wasting in sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a song in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Each and every one of us who responded to that light one time or another. And for the individuals who we know, relatives, family members, who are walking in darkness, we need to share that light and that love. One might say that, you know, aren't all religions the same? Aren't all religions a little different? You know, as, as I pointed out, religions say that you can save yourself. You can become enlightened. Whatever terminology or how they're going to do that. They tried that against Peter and John in, 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 the, uh, in the temple. Uh -huh. Acts chapter 4 says, We see that you are both uneducated and ignorant, ignorant men. You know, they're proclaiming the word of Almighty God, performing miracles. The lame man got up and walked. That's right. He went walking and leaping and doing what? <laughs> praising God. He wasn't praising Peter or John. Mm -mm. 
Yeah. When God touches you, man, I tell you what, you can't hide it. Where was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I get all our old hair, we get all mixed up. All before. Oh, I know what it was. Peter and John, they were the, those uh, religious leaders recognized that they were both unruled, uneducated, and ignorant men. That's like the individuals that have PH, uh, have an alphabet ahead of their name or behind their name. You know. Now, granted, God does not place a premium on ignorance, especially when it comes to His Word. And I want to, I want to encourage those who are looking for an answer to the Bible question. If you haven't found it, at least I know you're looking. It was a little, it's a little tricky. I, I shouldn't say tricky, but maybe it was my way that I worded it, the question. But the answer is there. You know, these individuals that seek enlightenment, there's, you know, education doesn't bring enlightenment. Uh, there's groups out there that, you know, the, the more time you spend in it, the more enlightened you become. I guess, you know, if you're getting something long enough, maybe you're going to shine. I don't know. But only the true light. Shine, Jesus, shine. Mm -hmm. Shine on me. It was in, it was, that's the only way. We can't shine on our own accord. Wow. Well, I told you this would be a two parter. Isn't God great? Yes. Here we see the reason that God came into the world, reaching down to man, to sinful man, offering himself on our behalf. He sent Jesus, perfect, sinless in every aspect and every area. He had to be perfect and sinless because that's the only thing God will accept. That uses, leaves you and I woefully short. Romans says, and you do have a good Romans sometime or another, we all fall short. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But Jesus paid for our sins. So the individuals that you and I come in contact with, when we start poking holes in their foundations, they might hate us. But you know what? It is our responsibility as the watchman on the wall to sound the alarm, to call out that which is evil in their lives. Maybe not in such a hardcore way, sometimes I get accused of them. Don't hit them over the head with the Bible. Next week, we'll learn about the reactions of how we do that. I was going to put this all into one, but it's just, it's not going to fit. Four minutes is not going to cover what I have to say. Wow. For he who does the truth and, and comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought. Now, that's a good word. Wrought. I don't even know what that means. I had to look it up. Especially in the in the Greek Testament. It says to be engaged in, to labor for, to commit. He who does who you know does the truth and comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they who are engaged in in God. Those who are committed to God. Those who labor for God. See, those are the two choices. We're either going to do things in life man's way or we're going to do it God's way. Regardless. That's it. When we have a, do we have a biblical worldview when we look at the things that are happening throughout, throughout the world? 
throughout our communities? Do we have a biblical view or do we have a humanistic view? Yes, the line. And as we talked about very early again, there is no middle ground. There is no fence in where Satan knows the fence. And if you're sitting on it, I would encourage you to get off of it. Time to draw the line in the sand and say, I will serve Jesus Christ to the best of my ability, whatever that might be, wherever that might be. And I know I fall woefully short at times. But in the end, it will be worth it all as long as we're a soldier for Christ, an ambassador for Christ, Scripture tells us. Let's each and every one of us reflect on those words as we ponder on next week's message, which will be the second half. See, I told you students. So I said to Susan, or was it Joyce? I don't think I'm going to get through half of it. Oh, wow. I'm beginning to think like, you know, when you, you these radio preachers, you know, they'll give you 10 minutes of what they preached about last time until you get caught up. <laughs> In case you missed it the first time. I'll try not to do that next week. Try not to re-preach this sermon. The first half, anyway. Next week, we'll look at the reactions of you uh, as believers, how we should react when we come into individuals who are objectionable. But I'll leave you with this passage of Scripture from, from 1 Peter. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We'll take that apart next week. But I want to leave you with that. Join us as we sing our closing hymn. Number 600. Onward Christian Soldier.